Happy learning! Today we're talking about continuous functions and also limits at infinity. All right, so you may have heard the term continuous function back in high school where you heard a function is continuous if you could draw its graph without lifting up your pencil, but that's pretty mm, imprecise. All right, so we're going to do it with, we're going to define it with limits. So what does it mean for a function to be continuous? The function f is continuous at x equals c if all of the following conditions hold. Okay, the first condition, f of c exists. All right, in order for a function to be continuous at some value, we need the function to be defined there. Okay? Next condition, the limit as x approaches c of f of x exists. All right, so as we're traveling along the curve from the left-hand side, we get the same value if we were to travel along the curve from the right-hand side. And then the final condition, these two values are the same. So if it's the case that the limiting value is equal to our function's value, and they both exist, Right? It's not like infinity and infinity, but these are both numbers and they're the same. Then our function is continuous at this value. Okay, and so let's take a look at an example. So let's let's answer why are they why discontinuous? At x equals two. All right, discontinuous is the opposite of continuous. So our first example, so why is this curve discontinuous at x equals 2? Let's say this, this dashed line is x equals 2. Well, the function is not defined at 2. So we automatically know it's discontinuous. The limit also doesn't exist. So this fails all of the conditions. All right, so this one fails conditions 1 and 2. Let's look at another one. So why is this function discontinuous at x equals 2? Well, f of 2 does not exist. So it fails condition 1. The limit exists, but the function's value does not exist. Right? There's a hole. I don't know if you could see that. There's a hole in the graph. And now, last one. So in this example, f of 2 exists. It's whatever our y value is here. The limit exists. It's whatever our y value is here. But these two numbers are not the same. These two y values are different. So this fails condition three. All right, so these are the different ways 
that our, our function could be discontinuous. If we don't have the graph, it's actually not too hard to tell if our function is continuous or not. And so let's say, let's state this as a theorem. Every polynomial Every polynomial function, so if you have like x to the third plus 2x minus x plus 2x minus x plus 2x squared minus x uh, plus 1, that's continuous. So every polynomial is continuous for all x. All right, so if you have a polynomial, we automatically know it's continuous. You don't have to check the conditions. Every rational function is continuous on its domain. All right, and what's the domain of a rational function? It's just we have to make sure we don't divide by 0. So it's every value except for those that make division by 0. OK, so let's look at an example. For what value of x makes the following discontinuous? OK, and our function is f of x equals x squared minus x minus 2 over x squared minus 4. All right, this is a rational function, right? It's the ratio of two polynomials. This function is continuous except when the denominator is 0. So let's find when the denominator equals 0. All right, so we set our denominator equal to 0. We could factor this. OK, so for what values of x make the, our function discontinuous? plus or minus 2. So negative 2 or positive 2, our function is discontinuous. Otherwise, this function is continuous. So with polynomials and rational functions, it's pretty straightforward. Another type of function we're going to look at is piecewise functions. OK, so if the pieces of a piecewise function are polynomials, The only values of x where the function might be discontinuous are those at which the definition of the function changes.
OK, let's take a look at an example. So determine where f is discontinuous. OK, maybe it's not discontinuous anywhere. But let's just check. So here our function is f of x. And it's a piecewise function. It's x plus 2 to the third plus 1 if x is less than or equal to negative 1. And 3 if x is greater than negative 1. All right, so this is a piecewise defined function. If our input x is less than or equal to negative 1, we use this rule. And if our input is greater than negative 1, we use this rule, which is just 3. All right, so to check, we need to, if we believe this, the only spot we need to check is at x equals negative 1. Our function might be discontinuous at x equals negative 1. And so how do we check? We need to check that our function is defined at negative 1. We need to check that the limit exists and that those two values are the same. So let's start with, is our function defined at negative 1? x is negative 1. Which rule do we use, the top or the bottom? We use the top one, because negative 1 is less than or equal to negative 1. This value is 1 to the third. 1 plus 1 is 2. OK, the function is defined at negative 1. Its value is 2. Now we need to evaluate the limit. And remember, to evaluate the limit of a piecewise function, we need to do the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit. So let's evaluate the limit from the left. So when we're evaluating the limit from the left, you could imagine we're subbing in values of x that are slightly smaller than negative 1. We're going to use the top rule, right? Slight, slightly smaller would be this rule. OK, so we're using this rule here, and then we just plug in negative 1. And we get the value of 2. All right, so our left-hand limit gives us a value of 2. Now let's evaluate the right-hand limit. So you can imagine we're subbing in values of x that are slightly bigger than negative 1. We're going to use the second rule here. All right, and this is just a constant. It always has the value of 3, so this limit is 3. These two numbers are not the same. right? The left-hand limit is 2. The right-hand limit is 3. So the limit as x goes to negative 1 of f of x does not exist. So we just showed that f is discontinuous at x equals negative 1. OK, so if we have a piecewise function, you really just have to check where we switch rules. All right, what I want to talk about now is limits at infinity. All right, and so suppose we have the graph of a function, and it looks like this. x 
as x gets close, as x gets larger and larger, right, as we move in the right direction along our x-axis, our y value gets closer and closer to 0. So as x gets larger, the value of f of x gets closer to 0. And so the way we would write this using limits is we would write the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals 0. In this example here, as our x value gets bigger and bigger, our y value is getting closer and closer to 0. This means the line So this horizontal line is called a horizontal asymptote. And notice as x gets further to the left, f of x also approaches 0. So we also have the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x equals 0 in this example. OK, and in general, How do we evaluate limits to infinity? There's going to be kind of two rules that we use. The first rule is that the limit as x goes to infinity of a constant is the constant. All right, if we had a horizontal line as our graph, no matter how big we make x, our y value is still going to be the value of the horizontal line. Similarly, if we went in the negative direction. OK, and then the other rule is that the limit as x goes to infinity of a constant over x to a power. OK, so if this is like. 5 over x to the fourth. As x gets big, this denominator is going to get massive. Some number divided by a massive number is going to get closer and closer to 0. Right? You could try it in your calculator. 1 divided by a million is very close to 0. OK, so the limit as x goes to infinity of a constant over x to the n equals 0. And similarly, the limit as x goes to negative infinity of a constant over x to the n equals 0. All right, and so this is going to help us evaluate limits as x goes to infinity. OK, and so in order to use these properties, so in order to use these properties, we're going to first divide each term in the numerator and denominator
by x to the highest power of x. So we're going to basically simplify our expression by maybe our highest exponent is x squared. So we're going to divide everything by x squared and then try to use these theorems. All right, so let's take a look at an example. So let's evaluate the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x minus 1 over x plus 2. All right, and so what we should do is we're going to divide each term in the numerator and denominator by the x to the highest power that we see. The highest power that we see is x to the first. So I'm going to multiply everything by 1 over x in the numerator and in the denominator. All right, so we have this becomes the limit as x goes to infinity. The numerator becomes 2 minus 1 over x. The denominator becomes 1 plus 2 over x. Right? Do you see that? This 1 over x is going to go to each of the terms. This 1 over x is going to go to each of the terms. x divided by x is just 1, and 2 divided by x is 2 over x. And now when we take the limit as x goes to infinity, what happens? These constants just mind their own business. There's no x's there, so they just hang out. This term here, as x gets very large, this term goes to 0. This term also goes to 0. So this limit is just 2, right? This goes to 0. This goes to 0. So we're left with 2 over 1, which is 2. OK, let's look at one more example. So suppose we have the following graph. All right, suppose this is the graph of our function. We want to evaluate the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x and the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x. OK, and we could just do this here because there's really no work to show. It's just explanation. But what happens to our graph as x goes to infinity f of x goes towards our horizontal asymptote here, which is 1. So the limit as x goes to infinity is 1. And the limit as x goes to negative infinity, well, you can see as we go in this direction, our function's value gets closer and closer to negative 1. So the limit as x goes to negative infinity is negative 1. OK, let's do one more. Maybe our graph looks like this. OK, in this case, the limit as x goes to infinity of our function, well, it never levels out. It keeps growing and growing and growing. So it goes to infinity. And the limit as x goes to negative infinity of our function, well, what happens as x gets further and further to the left? It approaches 0. OK, so just by looking at the graph, 
it's pretty easy to determine what the values of these limits at infinity or negative infinity are. OK, well, I hope you enjoyed today's lecture. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.